Welcome to Ridge Kids, everyone. We're glad that you're here, and we're already in the second week of November, and we've got a great message for you today. So if you joined us last week uh, with our school-aged Ridge Kids and our Ridge Kids Junior Preschool Toddlers and Kindergarten, we started a new theme. So Erica is going to talk here in a little bit about what that looks like for our school-aged Ridge Kids. Our Ridge Kids Junior students, uh, the younger, your younger kids, this week we're going to talk about something really important, and I want you to think about this because we're talking about how good things come from God. So whether that's our family or our toys or our food that we're going to talk about this week, God gives us all of these good things. So I think you guys are going to enjoy that, and I hope you talk with your kids about it. Um, we're here to support you at Ridge Kids, and we're glad that you are with us online. If you ever want to join us in the building, we're here at 9 and 1030 uh, for services on Sunday, and we'd love to see you in person. And we're super glad you're with us today. So enjoy the service. I hope you guys get up, sing together, uh, be silly, dance together, pray together. And then we're going to look at some Bible stories today that I think are going to have an impact on all of us. So enjoy the service. I'll check back with you guys at the end. Do I have what I need to open my restaurant? 
Oh, I have a menu. I have an apron. And I have a table. And I have all kinds of food. I think I'm ready. Hey, can I take your order? On the count of three, tell me what you love to eat. One, two, three. Wow, that's a lot of great orders. Coming right up. Who? Who? Hey, it's Ollie. Hello, Luca. Who? Who? It appears as though you have a lot of great food. Yeah, Ollie. I'm pretending to have my own restaurant and cook lots of good food. Restaurants are fun. It's true. And I know who made all the food. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? Ollie's got a Bible story for me and you. Okay, go fetch Stormy Jane. <laughs> oh, hi, friends. I'm Carrie. Today, I'm playing fetch with my best dog, Stormy Jane. Whoa, Stormy Jane, that's not your toy, that's your food bowl. What do you think Stormy Jane wants? Oh, food, I think you're right. She must be hungry. Are you hungry, Stormy Jane? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Hey, that reminds me of a story about a man who was hungry. Let me give Stormy a snack and I'll tell it to you. Here you go. The true story from the Bible begins with a man named Elijah who was hungry and wanted some food. There was no food or water anywhere. God told Elijah to go to a woman that God had chosen and she would give him food. So Elijah went to find her. Tell me if you see the woman. Do you see her? There she is. That's the woman God said to ask. So Elijah went up to her and said, can I have a drink of water, please, and a piece of bread? I am very hungry. I'm so sorry, she said. I don't have any bread. I only have a little oil and a little flour. I'm picking up sticks so I can make one more meal for me and my son. After that, we won't have any food left. Don't worry, Elijah said. God will help you and give you all the flour and oil you need. So the woman went home and she used the flour and oil she had to make bread for Elijah. There's the oil, and there's the flour. Now she needs to mix the dough together. Can everyone help? Let's mix, 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 mix. Now let's knead the dough. Ready? Knead, knead, knead. Good job, little bakers. You can stop now. The bread is ready to go in the oven. When the bread was ready, the woman gave the bread to Elijah and he ate it. Wow, God is good. Say it with me. Who is good? God is good. Then the woman went back to make more bread for her and her son. And guess what? God provided more oil and flour just like he said he would. <laughs> wow, God is good. Say it with me. Who is good? God is good. Every time the woman, her son, and Elijah needed food to eat, God gave more oil and flour to make bread. Elijah, the woman, and her son were very thankful for the food God gave them. And we can remember to be thankful for our food, whether it's Donut Day, Noodle Day, or Taco Tuesday. When we look around and see food, we can say, God is good. Say it with me. God is good. Hi, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who is good? God is good. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who is good? God is good. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Bye. So there's your story. And it's all true. God is the one who makes food for you. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow! Isn't it cool to know that whatever we eat each day, we can thank God for our food? I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Now!
now it's time for dessert at my restaurant. And I have the perfect thing. A donut. Mmm, I'm so thankful for donuts. See you next time. Rich Kids, it is the second week in November, and this month we are talking about courage. I love the Bible stories that we're talking about this month, and I hope that you really enjoyed the story um, about David and Goliath. Our bottom line for this week is you can do what you should, even when things seem impossible. David's story, wow, it's a big one. He was facing a major giant, and it seemed scary and impossible. But with God's help, David was able to conquer his fear and come out on top. And so it's just such an um, inspirational story, and I love it. Um, we're getting ready to show you some slides here on the video, and I hope that you'll take some time to pause the video and discuss it with your family members. Um, we can learn a lot from each other, and I hope you'll choose to do that. This month's memory verse is found in Joshua 1, 9b. It is, Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you wherever you go. I hope you'll take some time to memorize that verse. It's a good one to help us through hard times. Um, if you need anything, let us know. I hope that you know that we're praying for you and that we care and we'd love to support you in any way we can. We'll talk to you soon and have a good week.
what we all need is rescue, right? I needed rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. And you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, then I ran out of that grave. Woo! Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Hallelujah. You call my name. Then I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Oh, oh, hey! Brandon, you will not believe what I just found. What? The multiverse? The multiverse? What is the multiverse? Oh, come on, you know, like in the movies. Uh, oh, you mean that place that has like an infinite amount of universes with infinite versions of ourselves? <laughs> There's no way that place is real. That looks like a Christmas ornament. Yeah, in this universe. Let me see that. What? Oh! Brandon, what did you do? You just broke the multiverse. John, for the last time, there's no such thing as the multiverse. Things just got out of hand. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon, that's John, and we are excited about today's show. Yes, we are, because we're talking about courage. That's right, and today we have a very special guest, and I am—I have to say, I am extremely excited about this. I'm a big fan. I even brought us along, I brought the, um, oh man, I, uh, I forgot something that I want him to sign. I'll be right back, you know, you know uh, uh, cover okay, for me. Okay, okay. I'll be right back. Uh, I guess I'll just, uh... was that a knock at the door? I mean, Brandon, I think he's here. Um, uh, okay, please welcome someone who knows stuff. Someone who knows stuff. Uh, someone who knows stuff. Hello? Hello. Hi. Uh, would you like would you like to come in? Oh, indubitably. And and have a seat. Oh yes, that would be most appreciated. Now? Oh, ha! Yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you, whoever you are. Yeah. Let's see, where do I begin? So many choices. Uh, don't. What if I mess up? I don't. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Most appreciated. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'm sorry. But, but what did you say your name was? It's John. Ah, thank you, Super John. Or do you prefer John Man? <laughs> Just John is fine. Mm, very good. Just John. Thank you for the hospitality. Actually, do you know why I've been summoned? I'm not going to have to do anything serious or alarming, am oh. I? Oh, no, no, I, 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 I don't think so. My, my friend Brandon, he's a huge fan of yours, and he just thought we'd you know, have you on the show to talk about courage oh. and being a superhero. I see. Why don't we start with TR and what you know? Oh, oh I, I, that would be splendid. Yes. I am Captain Anxiety, <laughs> and I know many, many very heroic things. Great. Mm. Uh, tell us why it's important to have courage when you're a superhero. Absolutely. Courage. 
you know that's not really my strong suit. It's not my speciality, if you will. I, I am more of a person who likes to run, hide, and uh, scream like a fainting goat. Like a... Ah! Oh. Um... Hmm. That's really my modus mm -hmm. operandi, if you will. I, uh, 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 you know, you know, there's lots of ways to stand up for what's right. You are correct, Just John, for instance. I like to make sure no one does any over-squeezing of the avocados in the grocery store. You can make sure they're ripe, but any more than that and you've crossed the line. Sure. You know, you know, looking out for those that don't have a voice in our society is an incredible way to stand up for others and show courage. Hmm? So, so what do you usually tell the over squeezers. Oh! <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't usually say anything. I don't want to step on anyone's toes. So what I do is usually stare at them with my ubiquitous eyes of judgment. Oh. Mm. That usually elicits the desired response. Mm. Oh yeah, I bet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Don't take this the wrong way. I. I you just seem to be a little, uh, I don't know, scared to be a superhero? <laughs> not a truer word was spoken, just John. But fear should not deter one from being heroic. A hero should endeavor to do what's right despite his or her fear. At least, that's what I read whilst perusing the hero's handbook. Oh. You can have that, I have many. Oh. I even signed it. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm, yes. Um, uh, you know, you know, uh, Brandon's gonna be so sorry he missed you, uh, but thank you so much for coming on the show today. You were very, very enlightening. Oh, oh. Yes. Anytime, Just John, tell your friend, hello from me, All right. Captain Anxiety. I depart. Ah. Oh, you just, you, no, no, you, it, it opens inward. You this pull it. This barrier has been placed here uh, by my arch nemesis. Yes. Just, just, here, hold on a second. Nope, nope. Ah. There you go. Much appreciated, Just John. Sure. Doors are my kryptonite. Mm. Also, pickle jars are my kryptonite. And I'm not so fond of, well, kryptonite. <laughs> but no matter. I depart. <laughs> oh, watch out for that parking meter. Okay. Is he here? Oh, oh, you just missed him. What? Oh, man. I knew I was taking too long. Oh. What did he say? Uh, he talked about, uh, oh, uh, when he first came in, he was, Really nervous, oh, yeah. you know, oh, and yeah. uh, and scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but he had some amazing things to say about not letting his fears keep him from being a hero. Well, he is Captain Anxiety after all. Mm -hmm. I knew he'd be a great guest. Oh, he also told me to tell you, hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, he, and, and he oh and he gave me th this to give to you. The hero's handbook. <laughs> Oh, and he signed it. Uh -huh. Apprehensively yours, <laughs> Captain Anxiety. This is the greatest day of my life. Oh. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, I gotta say, Captain Anxiety was something special. That's a good way to put it. What have you got for us today? Well, as Captain Anxiety demonstrated, sometimes heroes aren't the ones you usually think of. That's what today's story is all about. And we're gonna tell it with Laundry Theater. Today's story comes from the book of 1 Samuel in the Old Testament. The Israelites had a king named King Saul.
But instead of doing what God wanted him to do, Saul did what Saul wanted to do. So God decided there should be a new king and told one of his prophets, a priest named Samuel, to go and find one. So Samuel traveled to Bethlehem to meet with a man named Jesse. He informed him that one of his sons would be the new king of Israel. Now the first son, Eliab, definitely looked like a king. And Samuel thought this had to be the one. But God spoke to Samuel and said, do not consider how handsome or tall he is. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at what is in the heart. He will not be the new king. Jesse had six other sons stand in front of Samuel, but God told Samuel that none of these would be king either. Samuel asked Jesse if he had any other sons, and Jesse sent for his youngest, David, who was out tending the sheep. Now, David was extremely young and smelled of animals. He was far from looking like a king. But once again, God looked in David's heart instead of his appearance and knew that this would be the next king. Now, David was not king yet. He was still tending his father's sheep. And King Saul, well, he had no clue that a new king had even been lined up. You see, Saul was busy trying to stop an invasion from the Israelite enemies, the Philistines, and Saul had run into a problem, a nine foot tall problem named Goliath. Goliath was a soldier for the Philistines, and every day Goliath would walk down into an open field and offer a challenge of single combat to any Israelite. If anyone could defeat Goliath, the Israelites would win the war. Unfortunately, the Israelites were terrified and no one was brave enough to face Goliath. This went on for 40 days in a row. Finally, David was sent to the front lines of the battle to bring his brothers some food. When David arrived, he heard Goliath's challenge and he was angry that no one had offered to fight him. When King Saul heard that David was volunteering, he sent for him but quickly told David that he was way too young. But David insisted. He told Saul that he had fought lions and bears to protect his father's sheep and that he would fight this giant to protect Israel. God had saved him from wild beasts and God would save him from Goliath. So Saul agreed and let him face the giant and he gave David his own armor to wear, but it didn't fit. Instead, David went to the riverbed and chose five smooth, small stones to be his only protection. The next time Goliath made his challenge, David stepped right in front of him and faced the giant. Goliath made fun of David, but David stood his ground and he said, you come against me with a sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord and he will give me victory over you. As Goliath charged, David took a stone from his pocket and he flung it with everything he had and hit the giant. The stone hit its mark and Goliath and the Philistines were defeated. David had faced his fears and proved that it is the hero's heart that matters, not the size. The end. Well, I guess, David had practiced going up against lions and bears, so, so maybe Goliath wasn't as frightening to him as he was to the other Israelites? Lions and giants and bears, oh my! <laughs> you know, from the, never mind. David also had practiced asking God for help. God had gotten him through some tough spots before, so David knew nothing was impossible with God. You know, David and Captain Anxiety have something in common. They both might not look like superheroes, but it's what you do and what's in your heart that's the test of a true hero. Yeah. Oh, hey, thanks, Kellen. Awesome story. Thank you. And until next time. Whoa, that was unexpected. <laughs> do you think Captain Anxiety ever had to face a lion or a bear or, or something that seemed impossible? <laughs> No, but it's time for us to reveal the question. What seems impossible to you? Oh, okay, I remember in school there would uh, be tests 
that I was 100% sure were impossible to pass, but I would study and practice. Then you would pass? Not all the time, oh. but the studying gave me the courage to take the test and know that I had done my best. Well said. Thank you. When, when something comes up that seems impossible to me, I like to remember God's faithfulness in the past. It, it helps me face what I think is impossible now, mm. because I know that I'm not alone and God is with me. Oh, indubitably. That's a big word for you. No, I learned it from Captain Anxiety. Oh, he's the best. He is all right. I guess that's it for today. We'll see you next week for a brand new show. Woo! You know who my favorite superhero is? Who's that? Guess. Uh, Captain Anxiety. Look into a mirror. And tell yourself you are loyal and give constant support and allegiance. Ah, this is true. I am very loyal, uh, particularly to my table tennis team. Unless we're playing the Paddington Paddlers, they are frighteningly above average. Tell yourself, you have determination. You show firmness of purpose, firmness. Rather squishy. Hmm. I'll move on. Tell yourself you are selfless. You are more concerned with the needs and troubles of others than you are for yourself. This is also true. Unless the troubles have to do with big scary people or animals or bugs or you know, oversized rocks and twigs, sometimes smaller rocks. I'm not a big fan of dirt or dust. Did you know dust is made up of human skin? Did you know that? Terrifying. See, look, there, there's some right there. That could be you. Ah! <coughs> this is where dust is born. <laughs> Wow, awesome Bible story. I don't know, have you guys heard that story before? Maybe, probably. Uh, but our message and our theme today is that you can do what you should even when things seem impossible. So do any of you guys like underdog stories or like sports where the team that no one thought could win won or the kid maybe that didn't have any musical talent that ended up working hard or being blessed and, and having great success. So those are my favorite kind of stories, the stories of underdogs. And when we look at David in this story versus Goliath, it's kind of that ultimate underdog story. But what I want you to think about is this week is what are you facing that seems like you're going up against Goliath, right? What, what's been hard for you? And maybe, kids, maybe you're, there's something that's making you nervous or worried at school or in your family or uh, with friends or parents. There's things that we go through that just seem like insurmountable, like it's impossible, and we can't overcome that. And we look at this story, and we look at David and his trust in God, and I would just encourage and challenge you to try to find the ability to trust in God this week and ask Jesus to help you with whatever you're up, whatever you're facing that seems impossible to overcome. So spend some time praying together as a family right now, Go back and read that Bible story, and I encourage you to read and memorize our memory verse this month, which is Joshua 1.9. It says, Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you wherever you go. So memorize that one, put it on your heart, and just be encouraged by knowing that God's with you wherever you go. So have a great week. We'll be back next week, and I look forward to seeing you guys. So see you next week, Ridge Kids. <laughs>